All right, so we have t equals negative 13 pi over 6. And a couple different ways we could do this. Um, you know, one of the ways that we look into doing problems like this is, you know, simply graphing them. And so if I had a nice little unit circle, and remember, this is always our initial side. Well, notice that, remember, we're going in the negative direction. So therefore, I'm going to go all the way around, I'm um, going in the clockwise direction. Well, halfway around a circle is what we call pi. Well, since I have a denominator of 6, that's going to be 6 pi over 6. So all the way around would be 12 pi over 6. And you could see that we have a negative 13 pi over 6. So it's just going to be 1 sixth of half of this circle is going to be my eventual, eventual angle. But a lot of times what I like to do is just evaluate for that coterminal angle, which is going to be the smallest one that we can evaluate for the exact same points. Or actually, in this case, what I'm going to use is the reference angle. Um, so actually, not even using the reference angle. I'm just going to use. Uh, um, well, using the reference angle, but then to determine our angle. So to find the coterminal angle, the smallest coterminal angle, what I can do is I'm just going to add periods of 2 pi. Now notice a period of 2 pi is 12 pi over 6. So if I add 12 pi over 6, my angle now is going to be negative pi over 6. So if you look at my quadrant unit circle, we know that my angle is going to be in the fourth, fourth quadrant. Well, pi over 6 going in the positive direction has this point, square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. But now I'm going pi over 6 in the negative direction. So it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. It's still going to be the exact same point. But instead of my x and y both being positive, now my y is going to be negative. So therefore, the coordinate point down here is square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. So I'm going to write that up here so for us to evaluate our six trigonometric functions. All right, so when evaluating for sine, Remember, sine represents the y coordinate of our point where our angle intersects the unit circle. So that's just going to be a negative 1 half. The cosine represents the x coordinate. So that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. The tangent represents the y over the x. So that's going to be a negative 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. To kind of keep this a little bit simple, we can uh, divide out those twos. So I'm just left with a negative 1 over the square root of 3. Again, we have to rationalize the denominator. So therefore, my final answer is going to be a negative square root of 3 over 3. For the cosecant, I have 1 over my y coordinate, which is 1 over negative 1 half. Again, I can just multiply by the reciprocal. So it's 2 over 1 times 2 over 1. So my final answer is a negative 2. For the secant, I'm going to have to get some more space here, because I know that's going to take a little while. So I have 1 over my x coordinate, which is square root of 3 over 2. Now I multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to be 2 over the square root of 3. 2 over the square root of 3. That multiplies into 1. So I'm left with 2 over the square root of 3. Now I need to rationalize the denominator like I did over here. So I multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. And I'm left with 2 square root of 3 over 3. Finally, for the cotangent, I have the square root of 3, which is my x coordinate, over 2 divided by a negative 1 half. Again, we can go through and just divide out these twos. And I'm just left with a negative square root of 3 over 1. So it would just be negative square root of 3 over 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate your six trigonometric functions. Thanks.